Hi, welcome to Talking Tech. I'm your host, Marcus Yam, and the news for today is all about 12th gen Intel Core processors, codenamed Alder Lake. This year, it's all about mobile, and today, the news is expanding into the full family. Joining me today is Dan Rogers. Dan, thanks for joining. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do at Intel? Sure, thanks, uh, Marcus, great to be here. I'm the 12th gen mobile product director. I'm here today to talk about uh, all these new laptops. Great, so let's start at the highest level. 12th gen. What does it mean? What's new? Uh, and what should people know about it? 12th gen's all about performance. Uh, we have a brand new core architecture. It's the biggest change we've had in x86 architecture at Intel in over a decade. We have two new cores, a performance core and a fission core. Performance core has got really high IPC. It's really optimized for single threaded tasks, extremely high frequencies, uh, very bursty, very responsive. We also have new efficient cores, which are sort of like a Skylake core from years past in terms of IPC. So similar performance at frequency to those Skylake cores, but operates at much lower power. We can pack a lot of those into the chip and we have a great increase in multi-threaded performance. So the combination of these two, plus Thread Director, which we can talk a bit about bringing that together in software, really makes for a special generation. So why the decision to use two different architectures and putting them together? We, we felt that's a really step forward. We needed to go more than the traditional generation. So just moving the performance core enough wasn't going to get us there this year. We wanted to do something really special. Um, so the combination of the two architectures allow us to optimize in different directions and then bring them together in software. And I think when we take a look at the performance data, you can see the results of that work. OK, uh, so you said performance hybrid architecture, performance data. Um, but before we get into that, I think I want to know about uh, the whole family, the whole mobile family. Um, so it starts with our uh, desktop products, which we announced uh, last year, and the reception to those has really been amazing. We brought that same great performance to the enthusiast laptop segment for gamers and creators, real high-end power users. And today we're bringing this now to the thin and light category as well, which makes up the bulk of the market. It's an incredibly diverse market with really thin systems, two-in-ones, foldables, detachables. And now this new category we're calling uh, P-series performance thin and light systems, which really marry the two concepts together, a performance level, uh, enthusiast level of performance and a thin and light form factor. Okay, so you're walking me through that. Can you get a little bit more specific on, you mentioned P cores, E cores. I see a different kind of, I see a different core count and configuration all the way down from the H series for enthusiasts down to uh, performance thin and light to modern thin and light. Can you tell me a little bit more about um, all the configurations for each one? Yeah, sure. So it, it starts with our, um, our P series here for thin and light. So this is our new performance thin and light product. And this offers 14 cores. Uh, it has six performance cores and eight efficient cores. And this is a similar silicon configuration to our H series, but we've been this thing aggressively for power. We've optimized the IO. And so it's perfect for a thin and light computer like you see in front of me here today. And this really changes the game for thin and lights. So compared to traditional thin and lights in the market last generation with 11th gen, this can offer up to 2x the performance gen on gen, which is really an enormous speed up. Now, this one is the uh, H series for the gaming and enthusiast. And the ones uh, in front of that are all P series. Mm -hmm. Uh, but they look similar. So what's the relationship between H-series and P-series? Uh, because on the table, they look quite different. But so it looks like what you described that they're quite related. Sure. So our, our H-series generally pairs with discrete graphics. It's for gamers and creators and those that want that top-end PC experience, um, really pushing the system to what it can do. P-series brings that into a thin and light form factor, generally with our integrated uh, graphics, Iris Xe. 96 EUs, great for 1080p gaming, uh, medium to high settings. And that blends the two experiences together in this new thin and light form factor here. And also I've noticed that you're going from six P cores and eight E cores on both H and P, but it's different on U series. Uh, can you tell me more about that difference in core configuration? Sure, so our U series is a more tailored configuration, really optimized for power and area. And you can see in this, uh, product here. So this is our 9 watt U series. You can see it here. It's much sort more of, compact. Too. Sort of shrink wrapped right. there around the two, the two dies. And that allows us to achieve really advanced form factors. You'll see some tablets, detachables, foldables, and ultra thin laptop two in ones. The, uh, what's, what's the little uh, chip on the bottom? Is that, that's a PCH. Sure, that's our traditional PCH. It's uh, shared here across all the products. And so we have a lot of I.O. in the PCH, and we also have our new uh, 6 c uh, Wi-Fi solution, also the digital components of that integrated into the PCH as well. Okay. Uh, so feature-wise, you mentioned P-cores, E-cores, Thread Director. 
Um, but what about performance? Performance across the family, what does that look like? This is a view of multi-threaded performance. And you can see the multi-threaded performance plotted here against the SOC power on the x-axis. So what are the thin, the thin lines we're comparing gen over gen performance? Sure, so our 11th gen, our Tiger Lake based products, the four core Tiger Lake U series at 28 watts here, and then the H series, the 11980HK on the right at 45 watts. Um, so we've normalized the chart to our 28 watt product, and you can see that our U series delivers 30, 35% more performance at power, and our P series delivers 70% more performance at power. So 30% is the difference between these two lines? Vertically. And then the, okay, and then P series, that's the 70% above that at 28 watts. At ISO power. Okay. And it, it's really interesting to look at these types of charts because you can see at the same power, so if you move your eyes left to right, the same performance we offered just eight, nine months ago in our H-series product line is now available in a thin and light at half the power. So that's really, it speaks to the power of the architecture. And this is what we, what we mean by efficient cores, right? So this is efficient performance, 70% per, more performance at power or 50% less power for that same performance. It's really an impressive achievement. How much of that has to do with uh, the efficiency cores? Because when people say, think of efficiency, it's more to do with battery life, but there's a different approach that, uh, that you were telling about earlier about efficiency. Yeah, so our, uh, our hybrid architecture is built for performance, and that's why we even use the phrase performance hybrid. And it starts with desktop. You can see that in the desktop results. You've seen it in the H-series, and now we're bringing that to the thin and light category as well. We've built this hybrid architecture to deliver a massive performance and uh, speed up in performance at the same power level with roughly the same battery life. Uh, it's great all day battery life that we had with 11th gen as well. Could you walk me through the, the power levels here? I see that it starts at 10 watts, goes all the way up to the scone 45 there and um, clearly performance scales with, with power. So our philosophy when we were designing is to maximize performance at every power level. So we wanted to have this hyper scalable architecture that starts with desktop, moves into H-series enthusiast notebooks here shown at 45 watts, and all the way down into the nine watt level for very quiet fanless designs as well as tablets and foldables. And this is really a neat aspect of the architecture. It's highly scalable out of that same architectural base. Um, the two core uh, architecture for U-series with the eight efficient cores is really ideal for productivity use cases, photo editing, and web browsing. So this is a great thin and light day-to-day -day machine. It's great for corporate use cases as well. And those eight efficient cores offer efficient offload of background tasks. Like you could think about a minimized Chrome browser with many, many tabs, some ads running, virus scans, software updates. It can efficiently offload those tasks to the E cores while maintaining that responsiveness on the P cores. Who would be the ideal target? Who would be the ideal user who would want a P series in their machine? P series is really for uh, folks that need a, a high-end creation experience, but on the go. If you need a thin 14 inch laptop, um, like some of the models shown here, and you want that really great creator experience, but you need it in a thin and light form factor with great battery life, P-Series is for you. You mentioned that H-Series is great for gamers and creators. And of course, a lot of those workloads depends on discrete graphics. You mentioned about the great performance of P-Series. Uh, what does P-Series have to offer in terms of, of graphics? So our H-Series, as you mentioned, generally pairs with discrete graphics, both from third-party graphics as well as our upcoming Intel graphics, which will be really exciting coming up shortly in this year. Our P-Series generally pairs with integrated graphics, Iris XE. It's got great 1080p gameplay. It also has a real professional-grade media capability and has a 12-bit end-to-end video pipeline. All this is about performance on the processor, but there's more to an entire system than just what's on the CPU or the SOC. Sure. Uh, what, what is new with a 12th gen platform as a whole? Sure, yeah, a couple other critical features for us. Um, first, memory. We support all four major memory technologies, DDR4, DDR5, LPDDR4, LPDDR5. And this enables us to address the whole market this year. Uh, so no PCs left, uh, left without 12th gen, right? No PC left behind. Um, we're able to ramp a huge number of SKUs and a huge number of designs and move the whole industry forward all starting this year. The next key feature for us is, uh, of course, I.O. Um, desktop has Gen 5. We're spec'd at Gen 4 on the, on the notebook side based on industry availability. So we have a BI8 Gen 4 for, uh, for discrete graphics attached on our H series. And then for our P series and our U series on thin and lights, we have a two by four for SSD attached. Wi-Fi 6E was a technology that was in 11th gen Tiger Lake systems, but I see it again here. Um, what's, what does it mean for 12th gen people who are picking that up today? This is really the year of Wi-Fi 6E. We're ramping in scale. 
And this is happening for a variety of reasons. Uh, first is that the six gigahertz band uh, denoted by the E there after 60 is now natively supported in Windows 11 as well as Chrome OS. The other major thing that's happening is that countries around the world are embracing the 660 standard. There's now 50 countries either supporting it or actively evaluating the technology. And third, we've actually integrated Wi-Fi 6E, the digital logic, into the PCH of 12th gen core. And this is allowing us to bring almost all of our systems this year will be 6E ready to go. Um, so it's gonna be a great year for Wi-Fi as well. What about other things with connectivity? I see there's uh, Bluetooth 5.2. Yeah, and our 5G solution as well. Um, we're expecting up to 30 designs to have, uh, to have 5G, which is up from, from past generations. We're not only seeing Wi-Fi take off, but also our 5G solution as well. And uh, Thunderbolt 4, I know we talked about discrete graphics, but one of the great things I love about Thunderbolt, uh, Thunderbolt 4 is the ability to use an external GPU. Uh, do you think that that's a use case some people might use for a P-Series? Yeah, a a absolutely. And we, we support four Thunderbolt 4, so it's a massive amount of connectivity, 40 gigabit each. It's really the best in class wired experience. And uh, what about USB 4? You, people have been uh, talking about USB 4. What's the relationship there? Is it supported on 12th gen? Yep, absolutely. In fact, Thunderbolt 4 is really the most complete implementation of USB 4. We certify all of our Thunderbolt devices at Intel, so you can really assure a high quality of experience when you're connecting with Thunderbolt. And imaging, uh, is that related to graphics? Uh, yeah, actually imaging is our what we call our image processing unit. It's really used for the webcam. It's been in our ships for many generations. We originally put an imaging solution in for tablets and detachables, where you have a rear-facing camera. But as we've gone through this pandemic, we've realized that we're spending a lot of time on conference calls, Zoom and Teams and so forth. In fact, you and I have met many times over those solutions. Okay. So we've all, we all know that the webcam experience is now really critical for this form factor. There's been a few key technical challenges to making that happen. First, these uh, lids are extremely thin, much thinner than a phone even. It's not, not intuitive to think about that, but actually this lid is extremely thin. And it's a long way from the compute, which is located under the keyboard. And that signaling needs to travel through the hinge. So we spent a lot of work with our platform engineers to see how can we deliver a really high quality sensor in such a thin lid, and then route that signal through a hinge into the compute in the SOC. We've been able to really increase our deployment of the solution in 12th gen. We're up 10x from what, where we were in 10th gen. Over 60 designs will now feature our Intel imaging solution. And this is really great for a high fidelity, high quality camera experience while you're using a new 12th gen laptop. Yeah, I've got a big appreciation for computational photography that we're seeing in phones, as you said, but is, is this bringing computational photography to the laptop? Absolutely, tone mapping, color correction, um, all of that, uh, all of that uh, basic computational photography that we've seen in other industries and other technologies now available on the laptop. So that's a lot of technologies bundled all into 12th gen. Uh, and you've given me a great kind of top to bottom uh, view of it. What does it take to create this big scalable architecture that spans from everything you've shown to me, including desktop that launched last year? Uh, it seems like a big undertaking, uh, especially from gen over gen. And in fact, I'd have to say that looking at a gen over gen increase, this seems like a pretty significant one. How significant would you say that is relative to other previous Intel generations? Sure. Yeah, th this is a big moment for Intel. And we're really proud of the work we've done here. Uh, we set out to build um, not only a highly scalable, highly flexible architecture, but an architecture that can address the whole market and do so in incredibly high performance fashion. And we're bringing that performance from desktop all the way down to notebook. Um, we're really proud of the work we've done. It's, it's a testament to the hard work of our architects, our designers, our validation teams, and our software people to deliver the magic of ThreadDirector to bring this core architecture together. I know you've been talking to a lot of press and media to get the news out about 12th gen. Um, what, is, what are some of the more interesting areas you found that you know, press media enthusiasts are really focusing on for 12th gen? I think it's all about the cores this generation, right? And the, the performance is really, really amazing. It's a step function in, in H series. P series continues that performance trend. And then U series optimizes for power to deliver incredible productivity, performance, and responsiveness. So no matter the form factor, the primary experience that you'll see in 12th gen is an incredible performance. Uh, what is the feature that you're most excited about? For me, I'm most excited about ThreadDirector. 
I think this is an incredible technology. We're really just getting started. We've laid the foundation and we were able to move to this new performance hybrid architecture in a seamless way. This lays an incredible foundation for us. We have these two new cores. We brought that together for performance. And in the future, we have some really exciting ideas of what we can do for both power and performance. Very cool. Well, Dan, thanks for the overview. That was super insightful. I'm actually very excited about 12th gen, uh, especially P, P series. Looks like it's a big jump in performance and I can't wait to see some of the new designs for U series and what that enables. So, hey, thanks for joining me. This is great. I uh, appreciate it. Thanks, Marks. Thanks for having us here. Thank you.